So today we'll be looking at uh, the bisection method. Bisection is another root finding method and it is uh, uh, quite simple. It is the simplest root finding method there is. So for example you have this curve right and I, if I ask you where does the root of the function lies you can visually look and uh, look at the curve and you, you, you can say that yeah it lies here. Uh, if I ask you to pick an interval in which the root lies then probably you'll pick up uh, some value a and b and you'll tell me that the root lies in between a and b. How did you make that uh, deduction? Uh, so I mean, visually you can see that the curve is passing through this y-axis uh, sorry I named the axis wrong. So visually you can see that the curve is passing through the x-axis. So that means the root must lie there but mathematically if you have to say the same thing you would say f of a times f of b is less than 0 which means that the curve can only pass through the x-axis or when the curve passes through the x-axis it implies that the value of the function at the point at some location on the left side would be positive and the value of the function at some location on the right side would be negative or vice versa right so what it means is that the function value at a times the function value at b should be less than 0 only then can the function pass through the x-axis right so yeah so now that uh, you have picked up an interval a and b and ask and I ask you uh, where the root is without looking at the curve then the best case that you may give me is that the root lies somewhere in between these two points right uh, so what you would guess is you would say that the root lies at a point c which is in between a and b so let's say this is point C which is in between A and B. How do I verify whether this is the root? It's simple. What I need to do is calculate the value of the function at C and see if it is 0. Is it 0? Is it equal to 0? But as you can clearly see that it is not. So that this is not equal to 0. That means I have to do something else. So what I can, uh, what I can do now is uh, I can find out this product again f of a times f of c and also f of c times f of b so looking at this figure here what do you think f of c times f of b would be f of c is some negative value f of b is some negative value so f of c times f of b is greater than zero so this implies that the root does not lie in this interval because you're getting a positive value of the multiplication, right? So it cannot be the case that the root lies in between C and B. What about f of A times f of C? f of A is some positive value, right? And f of C is some negative value. And that would, in fact, give you a negative result. So this means that the interval does lie in between A and C. So what you can do is you already have A. You can rename C uh, or you can store C in B. So now you have a new interval. So if I just copy this, let me just copy it quickly. So now you have a new interval. Wherein this is this is gone now and this is your B, right? and now you look for C. So in the next step, uh, where do you think, so see you are not looking, you don't know where the root is, you are trying to find it out mathematically. So when I ask you now where the root lies, you tell me it lies somewhere in between A and B. So you say it lies here, right, this is your C. Now if you find out F of A times F of C, you see, you come to the conclusion that this is greater than zero because both the values are positive so the root cannot lie between a and c then you calculate a of c times f of b and you say that you see that it is zero it is less than zero because this is positive and this is negative that means you can now choose your a to be at or you can rename your c as a and you have another interval so let me uh, so let me uh, i mean uh, redraw the figure here itself. So now your 
so now your uh, C is A and now your root lies in between A and B so if you again try to figure out where the root is in between A and B your guess would be it lies in in the center of A and B and that would be some point near this root right so in three steps you have gotten to the root by following this method which is called the bisection method let us now implement it in octave we are going to implement this in octave let me create a file with the name bisection and that should be it let me choose a function uh, let me use the same function which I did for the Newton Raphson method which is uh, which was 4 times log of x minus x uh, the I told you this is simpler than Newton Raphson method because here we don't even need the derivative of the function to calculate the location of the root alright so again let me um, plot the function let me create some query points let me plot the function at these query points let me set the uh, x-axis location at the origin so that we can know where the curve passes the x-axis that will help us locate the roots all right uh, okay let me open up octave now and run the bisection code right so looking at this curve you can see that the root lies here and here so what do you think our initial guess should be I can make the initial guess to be between 0 and 6 right this one lies between 0 and 6 so let that be our initial guess we go back to we get back to the code and uh, so let's choose the initial guess of the interval so let a be 0 and b 6 all right so what do we do now get back here so what do we do now we take the initial uh, root to be in between a and b so let's see equals a plus b by 2 so that's our root now let's check if the value of c you have to take the absolute value because we are checking whether we are we have a root at c and if we have a root at c then f of c should be equal to 0 or we can uh, but you know in uh, MATLAB or in any other uh, computer programming language you never have absolute zero so what you can look at is whether that value is small enough and that value is small enough so you have to choose what value you'll be comparing against it with so I choose my small enough value to be 1 raised to 1 into 10, uh, 10 raised to minus 6 and uh, I compare the absolute value of my function at C with this value so I check if absolute value of the function at C is in fact less than the tolerance value which basically means I'm checking if my uh, value of C if my function value at C is a very small value if it is if it is very close to zero that means I, I know that there is a root over there right so this is whenever we start an if statement we have to end it with an end keyword all right now that I've made this uh, now that I made this comparison so a better thing would be let me do it in a loop because I have to keep on checking right I have to keep on checking whether that C value is the root or not so while loop will keep on running as long as the value of the function at C is greater than the tolerance as soon as it is lesser than the tolerance this loop will stop and we'll have our root so what do we do inside the loop what we do is we check if f of a times f of c is less than 0 that means if f of a times f of c is less than 0 it implies that the root lies between a and c if it does I need to replace c with b if it does not that means I need to replace what do you think it should be I would need to replace A with C right 
and uh, once I've done this, I have a new interval. And where where does my root should uh, where would my root lie now? It will be in between a and b. And this keeps on repeating. So now I have a new value of c. The while loop will check if I do have a value close very close to zero at c. If it doesn't have that value, it will run this loop again, get a new value of c. So it will keep on shrinking the interval, right, one by one until it gets to the point c. Okay, so let's see whether this code runs. There's an error, uh, passing error at line 22. So let's see what's, what's the mistake that I made at line 22. Uh, all right, because I while statement needs an end, and if statement also needs an end, so I forgot to enter the end for the if statement. Right, uh, this this end should be after this else command. All right, so now it should work. And the end for the while. C equals 3. So let's see what mistake I have done again. This isn't a mistake, but I forgot to write the semicolon, so it's printing out the value. All right, once again, let's see what a C is. Okay, so if you remember from the last, if you remember the last lecture, last video, you would know this is the correct value of the root. Anyway, we can verify it. So we have the plot, right? Let me plot the value of C and C if it lies at the root. So C at f of C with a red marker. Oh, I did not do hold on. So let me rerun that. We rerun this bisection code and then hold on so that I, I can draw another graph on top of it and then plot this. So as you can see you have in fact got the right value of C. How would you get the right value of the root on this? So you need to choose such an interval. So you would choose an interval of 6 and uh, 9, right? So let me uh, rerun it, make that appropriate change. Let A be, let A be 6 and let B be 9. If I run it, run the code for C, C is 8.6132. And you can plot it and verify that you, in fact, you have got the right value of the bisection, uh, right value using the bisection method. You've got the right value of the root right so this code definitely works uh, one way uh, if you would like to visualize how if you like to visualize the intermediate values one small change you can do is you can keep on plotting all the values of uh, all the values of the intermediate uh, roots that you get so whenever you get c you plot it where do we plot it i plot it on the x-axis so c on the x-axis y is 0 and let me plot it with a circle and I want to keep on I, I want to uh, observe these values so uh, MATLAB plots them very fast so I ask MATLAB to pause for a second when you plot these values okay so as you can see it's going around and around and finally it reaches this right uh, let me plot it for two seconds, maybe that would be um, better. Let me plot it for two seconds. And let me wait. Let me also change the interval between, uh, let me keep it between three and nine. That would give us more time to observe. So this is our first, this is our second, then third, it's quite near the root, fourth, fifth, it's getting closer, sixth, seventh, okay, so I think it's done, let me zoom in and see, so it has in fact converged, or is it still going, I guess it's, I think it's still going. Okay, still going because my criteria is quite small. I've given the criteria is one into ten to the power minus six. 
so I think it has finally stopped right let me check yeah it has finally stopped with a value of 8.6132 so this way you can visualize the answers as well so it stopped at 8 points uh, it stopped at 8.6132 8.6132 so I think it stopped somewhere here what you can do is uh, you can do another thing if you want to look at the last root you go here you go uh, because we couldn't figure out we couldn't differentiate which was the correct root at the end right so you can plot the you can plot the last one using you can plot the last root using a different marker and one final time let us run this code let's zoom in and see okay then here then here okay let's zoom in on this part it's figuring it out it's taking time because I have given a pause time of one second, two seconds in between each plotting. So it eventually stops here, right? This is the value it stops at. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I had to zoom in quite a lot to look at that value. So anyway, I think uh, you have got the idea behind how this works. And you can visualize it also if you want. So this is it for today. And this is this was one of the simpler methods that we looked at. And uh, if you want, you can run this code. I'll upload it in GitHub. Thank you for watching. I'll upload the next one very soon. Thank you.